Okay. So welcome to the channel. This is critical, criticalgeek.net. Um, this is the Keychron K6. It's a mechanical keyboard with fully fully modular and replaceable switches and keys. And I have some issues about this. So let's start with the keycaps. <coughs> Actually, no. Let's start with construction. So the keyboard, the Keychron K6, is basically a Chinese-made keyboard. They have several keyboards. They have the Key1, K, the K1, K2, the K1, K2, K6. Now uh, they have different configurations and arrangements with their keyboards. This one in particular, I requested the top of the top for the K6 at least, which is uh, replaceable caps, replaceable switches, aluminum frame. Uh, the regular version has a plastic frame, and it's a very, it's a very sturdy keyboard. So if you can see, it has absolutely no flex to it. I really like that uh, having no flex. It's actually a very nice. A very nice addition to a keyboard. Keyboards are usually plastic, which makes them super flexible. This one has no flex at all. It doesn't matter. Uh, of course, if you exert a ton of pressure, you will probably flex it, but not this one. The aluminum frame actually gives it quite a bit of sturdiness, and that's really good. Uh, the keyboard has a really good weight to it. It feels like a quality product, so points for that. Uh, I have some really, really bad issues with some of the build things here. So the first thing that I have is uh, the height of the keyboard. So out of the box, this keyboard is really tall. As you can see here, my, my head is basically completely in, let's say in a claw form at this point. The keyboard actually, in the tallest part of the keyboard, the keyboard I think is two inches inch and a half. So the tallest key in a keyboard is inch and a half. The shortest one is one inch, one inch and a quarter, if you consider the key. So that's extremely tall for a keyboard. If you see on my hand, your, your hand needs to be in a position that is completely uh, that is completely uncomfortable to type. This is absolutely non-ergonomical. Uh, I tried using it this way and it, basically my hands were numb by the hour so it's basically impossible to use it so you have to get or in my case I basically crafted this this is a palm rest uh, it's a palm rest that is actually an inch tall which is incredibly tall for a palm rest when you have a palm rest it gets it gets you the absolute perfect height to type yeah, this is a one inch tall. They also sell the palm rest in the, in the website that is for this one. It's not as wide as that one, of course. That's, that's a specially crafted one that I made. Uh, you can get a palm rest also on Amazon for like $10. So it's, <clears throat> it's not something that you're going to work around. But for me, if you buy a product, you should be able to use it out of the box. And that's that's really bad because it, it makes it really uncomfortable to use out of the box. The other qualm that I have with the construction is the USB-C port. Although I really appreciate that they included the USB-C port here, uh, they have a they put the port on the side. I don't know if this is because of the of how the PCB is arranged in the. Of, of how the PCB or is printed or, or the arrangement, the special or the arrangement of the keyboard inside or something like that. I have no idea, but they put the, the USB-C port here on the side. For me, a keyboard should have the USB-C port on the back. This ensures that the cable is out of the way and also that the cable is just directly going to your monitor or to your CPU. Uh, this side is kind of weird, especially if you're gonna put it on the side, put it on the right side. Most people have their PCs on the right side of their of their desk or uh, you know in the floor, but it's usually on the right side. The reason for the reason the reason for that is that most people are right-handed, so you know it is what it is. 
Uh, moving from construction, let's go into the keycaps. The keycaps have a very have a very nice shape. They are kind of like a curved keycap. Um, they also have, you know, the, the arrangement of the keycap. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of concave. It goes like in a slight slope this way, which is really nice when you're typing. Uh, they feel really nice when you're typing on them. Uh, they have a they have that nice squeaky sound that a lot of people like with the mechanical keyboards. I'm not going to review the switches at all. Uh, this has red switches. Uh, the version that I ordered is red switches. You can order it with brown and blue, I think, as well. So you can get either linear, uh, tactile, or clicky. I like linear. Uh, I like tactile a little, a little bit as well. My WASD is, is actually it's actually a tactile switch. Uh, we're going through that in a minute. So uh, the the finish of the keys as well. It's kind of like a satin type of finish, which makes it incredibly good because it's not a finger magnet. When you get some keycaps, they are usually shiny and, and very bright, and you know it has like this either deep black to them or just like a gloss cover all over them. This makes it that when you are typing them, it just becomes like a fingerprint magnet. This one doesn't have that problem at all, which I really like about that. Uh, it has different colors for different keys. It also has a different color key for this one. It has an orange uh, also for the lining, which is a nice touch to include different colors. It gives it a little bit of personality. Even though this is a 65% Keyboard, the keys have a really good spacing between them. You don't actually feel like you are, uh, you know, you don't make the double type too often, which is really nice. I'm a guy that my daily driver is the Surface keyboard. Uh, if you know this keyboard, it has a lot of space between the keys. So, you know, having this one, going from that one and into this one and still feeling okay with the keys, that's a huge win in my book. Uh, the keys backlit perfectly. I don't know. You can probably appreciate it more with the white. Let's see if I can get to the. Yeah. So if you can see here, uh, the backlit capabilities of the keycaps is amazing. You can really clearly read everything on the keys. Uh, you cannot read the function sides too well but well that's that's a whole different story the the actual keys themselves you can really clearly read them even when it's like pitch black and you have everything turned off this is legible those keys are great uh, the other part is the backspace and the the backspace and the spacebar uh, the backspace the spacebar and the enter key are perfect size uh, usually when you have a 65 percent keyboard <coughs> The, they either sacrifice size on the backspace, the spacebar, or the enter key in order for them to accommodate more keys or to, you know, just try to have a different arrangement and feel special and stuff. They didn't do that. They left backspace, enter, and spacebar full size, very well located. When you're typing and you're backspacing, it's perfectly within reach. Same with the enter key and same with the spacebar. So kudos for that. The only con that I see in the keys is that they are wobbly. I don't know if you can see it, but they have quite a bit of wobble. So if you're one of those guys that just goes with lots when their keyboard is wobbly, then this is definitely not the keyboard for you. Coming from a Surface keyboard where the keys are just like there, they, they will not wobble at all. Uh, Logitech K780 is my, my other daily driver. They are round and they are there. Uh, so they will not move at all. So these are wobbly keys. So if that infuriates you, this is definitely not the keyboard for you. Otherwise, the keys are great, man. Uh, now, let's go to the features. So this keyboard is actually compatible with Windows, Android, iOS, and Mac, which is great. It has a huge compatibility frame. Uh, being compatible with Windows means that it's also compatible with Linux, Unix, 
than every other uh, operating system derivative derivated from those two. As well, it has a switch here that allows you to switch between Windows and Android and Mac OS, iOS. Uh, I don't have a Mac, device, a Mac computer or an iOS device, but it worked perfectly in Windows. I'm pretty sure that it works just as well in Mac and, and iOS, but don't take my word for it on the, on the Mac part because I didn't test it in there. <coughs> the hot swappable board. Oh, this is a box, by the way. We'll talk about the box in a little bit, but the hot swappable uh, board is actually great. Comes with a key plugger with a key puller, sorry. So, uh, as you can see here, I'm just retiring two because I want to show you this. I actually changed one of the switches. Well, I, I changed several of the switches on the board, but you can see here, this is the reds that it came with, and I but these ones, these are uh, equivalent to browns, basically. It's a tactile switch. The hot swappable capability of the board is great. They don't have any exposed copper or anything like that. They have a little eye dent in there that you can just put your keyboard, like you just, you just push your, your key right in there and it's great. It works amazingly well. Let me see if I can remove one of the keys so you can see it better. you can see it there but it has this tiny socket in here so that tiny socket will actually just allow you to just plug this got plug this right there just like this and that's it you're done that's that's your whole keyboard your whole switch change which is great that that part of the keyboard is really well executed I really like that uh, if you don't like the switches or you, you're like me that you like to have certain switches with a specific with a special feeling I like my backspace and my escape key and my WASAD to be tactile instead of linear so those are great mm. uh -huh. RGB lighting it has a ton of RGB modes let me see if I can go through them so it has like I don't know how many, I don't know if this is like one, it actually is one LED per key, so it, it's not, it's not like sections, you can actually individually RGB every single one of these keys, which would be great if they had software to do it, because they don't, so you just go through the modes like this, and it's great, the, the RGB lighting works absolutely fantastic. It has some really interesting effects, uh, like this one. There's also another one that you touch a key and then it kind of like explodes. So it has very interesting RGB lighting. It, it doesn't have software to control that, which is a downside, but uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, you can hold swap between three devices. So whenever you turn on this uh, <coughs> whenever you turn on this keyboard you will be able to choose between three devices which is great because you have your phone your tablet and your computer all to the same keyboard and use them all uh, if you want to know you know it's, it's very similar to the k780 from logitech so if you have one of those or you have seen one of those you know exactly what i'm talking about uh, <clears throat> you have several you have the ability to switch between lining modes right from the keyboard and you also can go uh, brighter or uh, brighter or, or just like completely dark you know just very dim if you want uh, right from the keyboard which is also great uh, it has media specific keys which is play uh, forward volume all of that stuff they were great. I tested them. You can also up and down the brightness of your of your computer monitor. Uh, I didn't test it on a laptop, but I'm pretty sure it would probably work just as well. The other part that I really like is that this is a 65% keyboard. 
However, when you're typing on it, it actually feels, after you get past the, you know, being incredibly tall thing, it actually feels like a full size keyboard. So it's very well executed in that side, and I really like that. <coughs> now, the cons of the features it doesn't have a control software. So Keychron has stated that they are going to release their proprietary software to control this keyboard and probably the other keywords that they have in their lineup at some point. They recommend third party software to actually con control them. You can, uh, it comes in this quick start guide. They basically tell you here, go and use these two different softwares to customize your keyboard. Uh, I feel like that's an oversight. I would definitely not release this type of keyboard without a, a software piece because well that's very important since it's, it's actually a fully mechanic it's a very niche product so you know you would like to cater to whoever is going to purchase it and people that purchase this kind of keyboard are usually hardcore keyboard users which like to have software included with the keyboard uh, <coughs> uh, RGB at this point is actually limited to the modes that are included in the keyboard. Uh, I didn't... Um, in the keyboard, so it's, you know, you get this or, or that's it. Like, you, you cannot customize the lining on the keyboard at some point. Again, Keychron is probably going to address this with the software, but as of today, that I'm making the review, this still has not been released, so I have to give them a bad mark for that. Uh, the other part, it doesn't have an onboard memory. Being a mechanical keyboard at this price point, we're going to talk about price in a bit. Uh, it should have onboard memory, at least one meg of onboard memory, just to save your lightning configuration, and <coughs> that's about it. But it doesn't, and, and that's really bad. Uh, it doesn't have a micro capability either. You can, of course, if you use one of those custom software. You can put one of the keys to, to be a macro, but I think that that should just be included in here. Some of the keys should be able to be made into macro keys, especially a mechanical keyboard is usually either you're a typist or a professional photoshopper or professional uh, photography or this kind of software, but editing software user and you like to have macros in that kind of software and the other side is well you maybe are a gamer and you also like to have macros when you're a gamer. I hope that the fact that my camera ran out of battery right in the middle of the review does not look awful in the review. Anyway uh, so okay it doesn't have a dedicated receiver uh, not having a dedicated receiver is an issue especially when you want to have something to access the BIOS of a computer. If you don't, at that point when the computer is booting up, you don't actually have Bluetooth or any way to actually configure Bluetooth. So you need to have a dedicated receiver to be able to access the BIOS. The other part is like either you do that or you cable the keyboard. If you don't want to have a cable in your keyboard all the time and you just remove it seldomly, that might be an issue. You can still cable it, I understand that, but a dedicated receiver is always a nice to have. Uh, this tool, this is to remove the switches. This is very underwhelming. Uh, I'm pretty sure you saw me struggle removing the switch. So, yeah, I would like this to be nicer. This one is to remove the keycaps. This is fucking great. So, um, I would like to have the other, the, the last part, and this is just for me because I, I like gaming a little bit. So I would like for the WASD, use it, this part to be able to have a different lighting effect just out of the box. Maybe with the software you will be able to set that up, but for the time being, that's it's just you know the same amount of as everything else. Um. Let's go to functionality. This keyboard is great to type. I really like 
how they how it feels when you type. It's a loud keyboard. It doesn't have any kind of like dampening on the sound, uh, but it's fine if you if you like typing. You will actually enjoy typing in this keyboard. The Bluetooth has almost no latency when connecting. I absolutely love that. Most keyboards, uh, like this one, this is the Microsoft Surface keyboard. This is a really nice keyboard, but I have one huge problem with this keyboard that it always annoys the hell out of me, is that it takes very long for it to connect to a, to the computer via Bluetooth. Like, I press a key and then I have to wait like five seconds for the keyboard to connect to the computer. With this one, press a key, the device that you have selected starts blinking and two seconds is connected. It's almost immediate, I love it. Kudos for that. Making a Bluetooth connection that is actually fast, that's, that's great. Um, yeah, that's the other part. When you press a key and it's going to connect, it flashes the device that it's going to connect to, so you always know which device you're connecting to. <coughs> uh, it has a good battery life. I use this for a couple of weeks now. No, for a week and something, a week and some. Now, uh, it has a great battery life. It lasted me for the full week being basically nine to five in front of my computer uh, typing and using this with the backlit enabled and it lasted very well so i really like the battery good job there it's probably why it's so hefty on weight i actually like the weight maybe there are some people that don't like weight on their keyboards i absolutely love when my keyboards are super heavy that's one of the things what i like logitech k780 by the way uh you can charge it you can charge this keyboard without connecting it to the computer. So if you have a phone charger, you can just connect the phone charger right in there. It will just start charging the keyboard. It will not disable your Bluetooth connection, which is great. So you can have just a charger for the keyboard and then keep it connected via Bluetooth. So that's, that's really good. I really like that. Now, the cons. <coughs> I have... As, as much as the keyboard is good, the cons that, that I find, they are, they are huge. Uh, one of them, in functionality-wise, I mean. So, the first con that I'm going to, to, to highlight is the absence of a delete key. This keyboard doesn't have a delete key. It has a function key that goes into a delete. So, you can press function 1 and delete in this key over here, which is brackets which is uh, it's not bracket no yes it's, it, 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 it's brackets basically open bracket yeah. so if you're if you're a developer you're gonna hate that that your delete key is basically in a key that you're constantly using to start and end uh, and end lines of code you're gonna hate that delete should be either in the backspace or in the corner. The other part, like tied to this one, the other part that I absolutely hate about this is that this key, this should not be lightning effect. This key should be the lead, and then the lightning effect should be a function in some other key somewhere else. Maybe have one for the previous lightning effect, one for the uh, next lightning effect in this. <coughs> in the arrows or something like that, or maybe page up and page down, it's gonna be next lighting effect, previous lighting effect. This should be the lead, or if this is not the lead, this should be the lead with a function. That's a huge issue for me. Uh, the other one, there's no print screen. There's absolutely no screen. I, I, I tried finding it, like I, I took very close attention to it, there is no print screen. I cannot take a screenshot with this keyboard. There is absolutely no way for you to take a print screen. You have to go into whatever program you're using to take a screenshot and take a screenshot with and take a screenshot directly from the program. There is no print screen. That's a huge oversight. Again, this key, this key right there, this should not be lightning. This should be print screen delete. 
That's what this key should be. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so that's the cons. So let's go with the packaging. Packaging, it comes like this. The packaging is actually really nice. I have to admit that. So it's a very minimalistic packaging. It comes just like this. It's a tiny box. No space wasted. It comes with nice foam. I felt it that it came very well protected. It comes with a quick start guide. You can literally just read this and you're done. Like you, you know everything that you need to know about the keyboard just by reading this quick start guide. It has a fat manual as well uh, that comes in several different languages. So you can take a look at this and it will guide you through the whole process of setting up everything. Uh, these are the switches that I replaced. This does not come. Comes with the replacement, not replacement, but the additional keycaps. So these keycaps are, there are two orange ones that you can put on the corners that just to make it like an accent look. And you have Mac only keycaps in, in, as well in here. So you can use those if you want. If you're not using a Windows computer, you can just replace the Windows and the function key and put the command and the option key in there. So that's really nice, these keycaps. It comes with a keycap puller. This is great. This is one of my favorite keycaps right now. Keycap pullers right now. This is great. Switch puller. This is trash. <coughs> USB-C cable. Very nice USB-C cable. It's a braided cable. It has a... Uh, this, is, this is supposed to be able to clean the power or something like that. I, I don't actually quite remember what's the... the, the Proper, uh, proper way to describe it, but it's it's to protect your keyboard from power surges and stuff. It also has an angle <coughs> Type C connector, which is good because of course you have it on the side, so you want it going uh, to the back. Uh, this could have been avoided by just having the port on the back. Just saying. <coughs> uh, it, if you go to the side, you have many options to configure it. You can configure uh, the switches, you can configure the keycaps, you can have these keycaps and you, there is also an additional set of keycaps that you can get in there. You can select aluminum frame or no aluminum frame. Uh, you can select it to be hot swappable or you can select it to just be one type of switch. So all of those things are great. The, the, the site is really well. Um, um, perfect, that's it. So, now, uh, onto the cons regarding company packaging accessories. This is, this is a good price keyboard if you are comparing it to a big brand keyboard. So if you, if you try to find a hot swappable, a hot swappable switch keyboard from one of the big brand names, they are going to run around 150 plus. Especially if they are wireless. They, if they are wireless, they are probably going to run at 200 or something like that. I think like the mass drop uh, keyboard that is also hot swappable, that's like 250 or something like that. So they are expensive. This one is 100 and change. It's 119 or something like that. It's actually cheap when you compare it to one of the big brands. However, this is a Chinese made keyboard. And if it's a Chinese made keyboard, I will compare it with Chinese made keyboards and those are actually way cheaper you can get something that is similar to this with rgb wireless all of the stuff also no proprietary software or anything like that for like 69 on amazon so you know that's something to consider <coughs> uh, ebay amazon they will have a cheaper option for you uh, the other part that is good about this is that this actually has 12 months, 12 months of warranty. You can just call them and they should be able to just replace it. The battery though, the battery inside this thing that actually has only three months of warranty, which is, that's not cool. If you're gonna give warranty to a product for 12 months, you should cover the warranty. You should cover the battery, sorry. The battery is something that's part of your keyboard and if you're using a battery that lasts less than three months, regardless of the use that you give to your keyboard, your, do, your, your product is not good. Uh, the other part that I don't like is the cable. The cable is short, 
So if you have a standing desk, yeah, forget about using this table if you have a standing desk. If you have a standing desk, then this will not reach. It, that's just what it is. So um, that's an oversight. It's good that you can just connect it and charge it to a power port instead of using this to connect to the computer. But yeah, that's, that's an oversight to me. Now, my final conclusions. I think this product, so let's, let's start with the, with my, my main thing here is like, I cannot recommend this keyboard. The reason why I cannot recommend this keyboard is because it seems that it's a product that tries to address or to target too many consumer, <coughs> too many consumers. And by doing that, it successfully prevents it from being suitable for any of the targets. So this is not a good keyboard for a typist because it doesn't have an alt gr key here. This is actually uh, just alt, so it's not an alt gr. So if you're a typist, you actually need alt gr. Uh, it doesn't have a delete key. It's very uncomfortable to type out of the box. That's a huge oversight. And that's also one of my big qualms. If you buy a keyboard, you should be able to just take it out of the box and start typing. This keyboard is extremely uncomfortable to type on out of the box. If you take it out of the box and you start typing it, you're going to hurt your wrist. You need to get a wrist guard and having to buy or make something specifically to be able to use the keyboard, that's not okay in my world. You should be able to just buy the product, take it and just start typing right away. So this should be either a lower profile, a tiny bit of a lower profile, or just include the wrist rod, the wrist, uh, the wrist, <coughs> the, the rest palm, the palm rest, sorry. So make, you know, just attach the palm rest, include it on the box, make it magnetic, or just attach it. It doesn't matter, I don't care. Just include a palm rest with this, or make it a little bit of a lower profile. The lower profile thing might not be possible because of the hot swappable part of it, but if it's this thick, if, if your boy is this thick, you have to include a palm rest. I'm sorry. Now, for that reason, I cannot recommend this for a typist. Uh, I cannot recommend it to an IT guy because it doesn't have a delete key and it doesn't have a print screen key. If you're an IT guy, then you're going to be constantly taking uh, screenshots of basically every single process that you make. And that plus not having the lead. The lead is a huge thing for uh, for IT guys as well because you use control alt the lead to unlock servers. So not having a delete key, yeah, that kind of kills it for a for an IT guy as well. Uh, a gamer, I cannot recommend it to a gamer because well it doesn't have macro support. So it doesn't have macro support and it doesn't have an onboard memory. So a gamer would not be able to use it successfully in a macro in a macro heavy game like World of Warcraft or something like that where you actually want to have macros in your keyboard to make certain things. So for that reason I cannot recommend it to a gamer. I cannot recommend it to a to <coughs> to a graphics artist or to you know this kind of of professionals that they, they do graphics design and software editing because it doesn't have F keys. The F keys are function two plus a number. It's not even function one, it's function two plus a number. That and it doesn't have a macro. <laughs> Again, the macro thing is very important for some segments of the people that use this keyboard. So yeah, that's, that's a huge oversight. And finally, I cannot recommend this to a regular user because, well, uh, it's very niche. It has too many things that need to be addressed in order for it to be a, a functional keyboard. The palm rest, not having the delete key, not having an LGR key, uh, not having an onboard memory, the cable being, uh, you know, this switch cooler, all of that stuff. This is a product that is very specialized. A uh, regular user would probably not be comfortable using this. It's not an out-of-the-box experience, so that that kind of kills it for a regular user. So, 
Uh, so yeah. Having said that, I like the keyboard. Don't get me wrong. I personally really like the keyboard. I can work with it. I, I, I managed to go through the process of, you know, making a palm rest and just putting it there and it, it fixes the problems that, that it has for me. I have been able to just leave around not having a print screen. Uh, it's incredibly annoying. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I was using this for work, it would kill my process and it would kill my workflow because it would make everything that is, you know, creating procedures and taking screenshots and do just documentation would be incredibly slow without having a print screen. <coughs> it, but aside from that, I actually really like typing on this keyboard. So uh, if you're just doing some light gaming and you don't need any kind of macros, it works well as well for that. But again, that's me having found workarounds for this keyboard. Like this product is right now, I absolutely cannot recommend that you purchase this keyboard. I will recommend it for a certain a certain group of people if you fix two things. First of all, release proprietary software for this keyboard and then we'll talk. And then send a delete print screen key here. Like Enable users to be able to put print screen and delete in this key. If you do that, I can recommend this for either a typist or for an IT professional as your daily driver. Gamers and uh, graphics designer, graphic designers, and, and you know these kind of people that actually need onboard memory and macros. I stay away from this keyboard. I cannot recommend this keyboard from you for you. Uh, regular users, if you fix again, you have a proprietary software and you fix this to have the lead and a print screen and just be, you know, release the keys that for a dollar, like sell the keys for a dollar that you didn't include in your, <coughs> in your keyboard or like an alternative type of, of yeah, just, just sell a package with Green screen, the lead, and then these ones for the lightning, and then these ones, the LGR, and I'll buy it, I'll replace them, and I'll use your proprietary software that you have to release as well, and I'll, I'll reconfigure it, and I'll be fine with that. But as of this point, this is a product that tries to do too much and ends up doing nothing at all. 